Good Morning Trumptopia. Hosted by the incorrigible Mr. Zeppo. to mask that is the question as dear old William Shakespeare might have said did say in fact might have said did say probably and would say today to mask or not to mask quite a reasonable conversation that uh, reasonable people can have. Good morning, Trumptopia. Are we having that reasonable conversation? Are we making art about it? Are we surviving some very slow burn extinction level event? Are we collectively going through some sort of existential crisis? Will there be an American reckoning? Civil war? Or just a catharsis? These are the questions on my mind, friends and fellow uh, travelers through time. For truth be told, that's what you're doing. Whether you're sitting on your ass or running down the street or being a politician or... You are traveling through time, time travelers, and discoursing in public discourse while you do it. And um, times being what they are, I want to once again remind everybody of what a privilege it is to have so far survived the first half of 2020. As a global species or infection depending on your point of view, on the human species. But as a global species, humanity, whatever its madness, has managed to survive this far under ever-increasingly wild and insane uh, conditions. Not the least of which are disease and famine and self-destruction. The Grim Reaper is busy reaping, friends, because something that must always be acknowledged when we even just savor a little off the teat of our own survival, like the, the privilege it is to have, by hook or by crook or by whatever, not died yet. And I don't want to sound morbid or uh, extreme, but I also, you know, am not the first artist, speaker, uh, thoughtful human being that cared to share their, their contemplations with the world, to point out that we are, we are as a species morbidly obsessed with denying our mortality. And that's a whole nother problem, which causes, you know, us more problems. But I digress. To mask or not to mask is the question of the day. And the the perspective from which I look at it, friends, is that like of watching sports. Go sports ball. Um, As evidence to those who have ever forced me to eat with them at a sports-themed bar, restaurant, chain, uh, anyone who knows me in that way in real life can attest to the fact that I, I don't have an online personality. I mean... What I'm weaving here for your earballs is, of course, you know, my self-proclaimed attempt at being an online personality that is, to some degree, a little bit ready to be couched in fiction, uh, and my self-reflexive, you know, sci-fi action-adventure novels that I 
I haven't typed a page on for months. <laughs> uh, although I, millions of ideas are, are flowing. And of course, all of this represents sort of drafts at it in terms of the thinking behind what, what I might eventually get around to writing. Um, because we must, we must, as artists, if I may, for those of us who think of ourselves as artists, for whatever reason, you may judge it as hoity-toity. You may people may judge it to not point it at my listeners. People may judge it um, as uh, useless or a waste of time. But public discourse and self-reflection, those two things should ebb and flow in a meaningful way. In my humble opinion, in terms that we should not argue past each other. We should truly bring to the table our most well thought out concerns in terms of what we perceive and then deal with each other's perceptions because people see things wildly differently, right? And we have to build consensus around that which we can confirm through being able to point to it or being able to uh, describe it or, um, you know, attest to it personally. Uh, some kind of consensus about what's actually going on. And the more the more our society becomes uh, a megalocalypse of its own impending dystopian corporate doom, independent of whatever the fuck else is going on, you know, man-made or otherwise, we need to cope with uh, reality on reality's terms on the like moment by moment basis of what's what's happening before us and i don't know about you but i can only take my best guess and then attempt to check that with and or against my intuition and any other sort of um i speak in the collective now i think that we all can could should would be uh always questioning and seeking to refine our perspective and our understanding and in terms of approaching public discourse not as railing against those other crazy people who are totally dead wrong but around and round and round again sort of um, exchange ideas and reflect on them exchange ideas and reflect on them sort of never ending process that refines our collective comprehension if we approach it that way we can get to better truths because truth is a slippery eel of relative relativism, right? All the things that we think are obelisks, not obelisks. Sorry, that's a different thing. That's an error code um, sentence structure, 1111. 11. Uh, there's some relative reason why I think obelisks might be relevant, but that's not the word I meant to say. Obsolete. Obsolete is also not the word absolute obtuse and of course i'm being a broken record because i've talked about this before uh but you know mother nature is mother nature and we have survived this far and for quite some time now on a system of systems to call culture society and the machines and procedures that create wealth and then distribute capital and then recreate wealth to be distributed as capital, etc. Whatever system that is, which we invented, and that's important, like, we treat that more reverently, the economy, at all. Whatever ideas that that word cloud expands into, we treat that collectively, passively, thoughtlessly almost, with more, like, automatic reverence and concern for and stress about than Mother Nature. And the ironies both have the power to kill us, right? Both have the power to destroy us and what we are doing as a system of systems ourselves, as a society of people attempting to move forward through time using the machines and systems of systems we've invented and or built. Built is no, another term for made manifest, right? Like you can't build a thing unless you define it as a concept first and then share that concept and then create the, the protocol for construction that creates that which is built. And um, 
I get accused constantly of being a sheeple, right? And I, I have a very complicated and sophisticated, I don't want to say sophisticated and sound like a snob, but it's nuanced opinion about that word, what it means, what it stands for, and how it's being used. And as a label to spit in someone else's face literally and figuratively, and then literally again, to dismiss and cajole and bully and, and or spew hate at, that's the, the one of many ways of seeing that word and that term that I do not agree with in terms of I don't want to use it that way. I don't, I don't believe that that's the correctest term the most the most real valid definition of it and it and if if anything we should understand that like hating on the people is meaningless just like hating on the parrot people is meaningless but we got to recognize these things right um people are sheeple we are our we are all programmable organic semi-conscious semi-autonomous movie cameras and dvrs for the divine consciousness experiencing itself in a multiplicity of fractal recursion that is so mind-numbingly huge that it's actually inside of you more than it's outside of you. Um, because the universe is not just in your mind. The universe is mind. My mind, your mind, everybody's mind. We're all one mind. It's not hive mind. It's not like we're all drone bees, killers and and, and uh, worker bees, and uh, there's a queen or a king somewhere. Rather, as I've already explained on the show, and will again, because I really don't have an online personality. If you stop me at a bus station in New York, if you met me at a theater festival in Italy or Edinburgh, which I hope is... Up, they're up on my imaginary vision board in my, uh, in my mental room, right? We all have a little room inside our head, whether we realize it or not, where we work our mental construct landscape magic, for lack of a better term. It's technology. It's living being, internal modality, mental thinking construct technology that we don't recognize. We, we kind of live in blindness of. And we live in a relationship with Mother Nature. But I digress. On my vision board was whatever the fuck I was just talking about. And I ruined my own transition, but it all makes sense. Um, we are programmable. Reference Confucius. There's a brilliant Confucius attributed to, and so it kind of we can get lost in the debate. Is there really a Confucius? Did Confucius exist? Is he a, is he a creation of the state? There's the one thing that cuts through the fat, right to the bone. Do the words build understanding and evoke a deep? Like acts a deeper access in some small way or another to the wisdom that resides inside ourselves in a meaningful way that is not toxic, that is not bypassing, that is not all the horrible things that we've created for ourselves to trip up ourselves as divine creatures embodied inside the meta mind of the divine creature. Uh, when I say relationship to Mother Nature. And forgive me for being a broken record. I'm throwing this down for those awesome new listeners that are dropping in on this episode as the first ever episode that they're listening to. And for maybe those who've listened to more than four, but haven't heard this statement in a little while. Uh, or whatever. Repetition, yo. <laughs> Welcome to the Encourageable Mr. Zeppos. Rewiring your own mind. No, I don't have that kind of... Uh, product, but I do believe that words are conveyors of energy, and um, can work consciousness magic. So we must all be mindful of our words, and we must all like choose intelligently, like what we want to vote for with our minds. Uh, and a species, as I understand it, based on like comparative analysis and dipping my fingers, and I don't have a degree in anything, yo. So I can probably get debunked, but. I seem to be building an interesting puzzle piece with these puzzle pieces that I found that most people throw in the box of these don't fit in the puzzle. And to be humble, I'm not the only one, I'm not the first one, and the evidence is everywhere. But whatever. We are programmable creatures, yo. Confucius said we need to be conditioned and allow for some creation of like a mental... Uh, 
propaganda cultural system of teaching each other and ourselves and our progeny those things we value and think are important for the perpetuation of our society. And our society had by then, even in those early days of whatever the fuck ancient AD time um, Confucius lived in, right? And, and if, it's, if, it's, if, if he wasn't real, which some people argue because people wanted, to, there's like the Nair culture of everything is fake um, in some flavor or another. There's multiple flavors of why things are fake. There's even one that I agree with, literally. But the one I agree with says they're illusions and also real. So shut the fuck up with your fake business. Because if it's hurting people and it's manifesting stuff and if it's creating energies and if it's creating political movements and if it's shutting down people's lives, then it matters what we're thinking and saying. And how and why we're saying it. Okay. Okay. Many listeners might be going, what the fuck is this guy talking about? Others might be like, hmm. And that's like choosing not to say anything. Uh, and others would be like, crazy hippie new age nut job, woo woo, blah, blah, blah. Um, here's what I observe. And then, and, which is the reasoning behind what I post. I like harvest other people's images and fuck with them to create like, a, you know, and or quote things and then speak on them and that's like my instagram meme game uh and is that a valid form of art i don't know but if people can get famous for doing whatever the fuck else they do on in on social media why can't i get famous and powerful and build a media empire based on what i've got to say and how i make my art and imagine it now being translated into a movie or a film or an animation or a blah 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 you know these are nuggets of ideas that go into other stories where people discuss these things and then have sci-fi adventures um, but the one I want to talk about right now today, in relation to the cover of like the coronavirus has mutated, right? Google that shit. There's things. Experts dump cold water on theory that coronavirus. Okay, cool. That was from May 7th. I don't know. I haven't read that one. I'll tab that out. Uh, don't sue me for reading headlines. I'll source this. That's from khn.org. Uh, Newsbreak.com Coronavirus mutation Studies show COVID-19 may be 30 blah, blah. I've seen that a couple times Coronavirus quote Has mutated 30 times with deadlier strain Okay World Health Organization COVID-19 is airborne and has mutated to be more infectious Okay First of all, more and more this is starting to sound like Oh, you guys didn't think that be this is my response. If I were on a TV show, my bit, my next bit right now would be Dustin Hoffman, like clip two, Dustin Hoffman talking about how it's, it's mutated, it's gone airborne, right? And like, whoa, what the fuck? Because that movie's out there. Um, and in that movie, you know, the people who got sick and died bled out of their ears in under four days. So it was like painfully obvious. This is bad. And in that movie, the United States government was literally considering dropping it was either a nuke or a moab i don't remember which because i have i just watched the movie like a thousand weeks ago in lockdown in the middle of lockdown in rotation of several media consumption sessions of sanity i've done when i've been ins insomniatic uh something i'm used to but it's happening alarmingly a lot um and uh so i might get an app and the whole jazz right uh but whatever i'm trying to get back to a, at least a, like a six and a half to seven and a half hour sleep schedule because that's what I've had most of my life. Briefly interrupted by occasional three or four night periods of insomnia. What the fuck does that have to do with anything? Nothing. I'm just audio blogging here, folks. I'm a real live robot from the future telling you about what the fuck it feels like to be stuck with you on this rock. Which isn't a rock. And you all have forgotten this rock is a womb, a womb of a mother, a mother that gives birth to life. And in this womb, while all life is living and loving and breeding and mutating and evolving, evolution deniers can suck it and or until they open their eyes, right? Flat earthers can suck it and or receive my unconditional love 
I forgot to say that with the evolution deniers. Receive my unconditional love and forgiveness for clinging to that ideology. Those things are blinders. Those things are blinders designed to shutter you off from your relationship to the living organism that is your own mind and your own genome inside you, making all the cells do that what they do that you can't really do with sentences out of your mouth, right? You can't grow your body through time into the age and ex- that just happens. But it doesn't just happen, motherfucker. <laughs> it's like, okay, the best analogy, and I don't I can't claim to have originated it, but I've certainly tweaked it a little. I've you know, other people have thought this before and I'm expressing it co-currently. We are like, and I've said it before, so forgive me if it's redundant, but we are literally like little tiny germs living in some deep pocket of the human organism itself. You know you're covered with things that live on you, right? And inside you. Always have been. In fact, random fun fact in the universe that's real, that, to the best of my understanding, uh, is solid medical like knowledge that just doesn't get talked about and just doesn't think, you know, it's tre- taken for granted, but not thought of as particularly mean- meaningful. And sort of, and we get encouraged to just neglect it. And people out there who are being targeted for all the other complex targets of like, let's play with people's opinions, influencing media, which is everywhere, right? It's spoken at you by your neighbors and friends. (laughs) And it's not because people are all robots, although it could be if you fucking vote for it with your mind, you numbskulls. Um, (laughs) Sorry. That's not a villainous, villainous? I am not a villain having a movie villain laugh moment. So don't accuse me of being that. Uh, I am an artist who has uh, chosen as his Elohim, chosen spiritual uh, supreme God, the divine feminine as expressed through Mother Nature and the goddess's muse, right? Like, that's my jam. So, uh... People could say, that's a crazy idea that you believe in. Okay, sure. How did I get here? In my opinion, the way I got here to this logical conclusion is the way people, you know, fetishize, not in a sexual way, but in an intellectual way, the way the founding fathers of America got to the clusterfuck of interesting and weird and aspirational and also corrupt thing we all love and adore because it keeps us safe and, and gives us something to riot over and gives us something to to flood the voting system over and gives us something to literally go, whoa, government, you're out of line over, peaceful or otherwise, uh, the Constitution, right? But they were all crazy mofos with insane ideas and all kinds of spiritual beliefs that we often sort of just butter over. Uh, and and if if the human experience is literally about powwowing with each other a meaningful way to sustainably without killing the womb that gives birth to us because we're just little microbes living in this in this pocket of life bearing um wombness that looks and acts like this planet earth that we live on because that's the way it unfolds here for reasons that are both simple and complicated and have everything to do with the laws of physics, the laws of spirit, the laws of mind, the law, and there are laws, right? These are boundaries within the fractal womb consciousness egg womb being, which is the entirety of the cosmos, which is our mind. But not our little tiny itty bitty, we think it's stuck in our brain mush gray matter mind, like the whole process unfolding from unity of zero or negative zero or infinity to the multiplicitude of every fractal unfolding. If I could, if I could have like a, a visual slide cropped in here, like design note for the animated version, uh, right here is where the, the slide, based on a photo that I took, of a relatively large head of cauliflower <laughs> that I, um, a large head of cauliflower, right? Which is a vegetable or a fruit, or a plant brain, maybe? I don't know. Because when you cut it in half, it kind of looks like brainy silhouette of... It resembles, but doesn't look exactly like, 
images in biological textbooks about what a brain looks like when you take it out of a dead person, a dead person and cut it in half for scientific reasons, right? Uh, and obviously brain surgeons and whatnot study that in detail, etc. It's not exactly the same. I'm not claiming that it is, but the same like rippling, recursive, branching meta pattern makes your brain kind of think, like makes the whatever process in your process as an individual look at it and go, yeah, it does re- look like it. It resembles it. It reminds me of it. It looks more like it than it does a Ford, Chevy, you know, Dodge, Pinto, any name of, insert name of your favorite car here, right? A car doesn't look like a brain. Except that it does because it looks like the brains of the people who made the car. But that's a whole philosophical, metacontextual, like, form is made manifest vis-a-vis the imagination first. Whatever object you're holding that you bought or traded or sold or stole or killed or whatever, the, however you, whatever object in the infinity of objects that have ever been out there, anybody ever, listening or otherwise, somebody had to think of it first. Somebody conceived of it and maybe did it in a very humdrum sort of, I'm just designing this cup. I'm just designing this vehicle to transport whatever you're going to transport. I'm just designing this thing that burns toxic, uh, you know, waste exhaust and turns it into energy but you know we got to suck the blood out of the womb and all the things we just got to suck this icky whatever this is whatever good i know it's not literally the blood but it's metaphorically the blood and bones of mother earth there's a process going on and we're just sort of ripping up the process and maybe the analogy is flawed right the blood and bones of mother earth maybe it's too uh it's too messy maybe it's too violent but it's closer than free market economics, economics, free market economic gain is more important than living itself. I call it bullshit. Anybody who thinks that can suck it intellectually, not literally, please and thank you. Currently not interested in that activity, actually. Might do a mono thing, but I don't know. I'm doing a weird mental experiment because we're in lockdown. And lockdown's going to, I hate to be pessimistic, but for everybody who bitched and moaned about lockdown, and, I, and everybody who predicted lockdown, it's going to be different and worse than whatever imagined. It, but it, they're going to they're going to lock it down, hopefully temporarily, because <clears throat> there's politics in the world and th- that mental construct and that whole network is real, right? And there's corruption, and I'm, d- I'm not doubting it. But none of it is monolithic and as fear mongered as it really is. Um, and the living fear of it being worse than we can even imagine is a horror show. And that horror show is abusive and traumatic and toxic and logically probably happening somewhere in the universe of multiverses, of infinite multiverses. But if you understand and comprehend that there's an interactive factor, right, that the belief construct itself cumulatively evokes or disinvokes a chosen reality in any time frame of any unfolding fractal for any iteration of all life forms of all people and all individuated points of I'm a person. Hi, I'm a person. I'm an individual. Like whatever you are, color in the, the shape and form and the place and the, and the content and the whatever, there's an infinite multitude of us, right? To say there's nothing else out there besides the planet is ridiculous because there's multiple, let me put it this way. The reason there's multiple everywheres and everythings and an infinite array of it is because more than what we can see and perceive right now with the filters as they're set, there is the the seeing and the sensing and the phenomenological experiencing by a recursive fractal echo or branching um, alternate, to put it in other technical terms, of every self, yours included, whoever you are. And there's no breaking that part of the rule of like the manifest living fractal that is womb, which is like an egg from which we will hatch one day. But that's a whole theory beyond the theory, right? We can't even know what that is. So stop fucking dicking around with that shit. But in here, where we're all stuck together, in within the confines of the thing you're experienced, dear friends, if you can hear my words, I mean this in real terms about you taking the earphones off and then looking around the world where you go to work or used to go to work or never went to work or whatever you got to this point in your life where you're here and you've got the luxury 
because it is. Let's not let's not fuck around with with that either. Let's not pretend like everything's not teetering on the end of like you know, sort of conceivably no longer working well. If this disease continues to mutate, and it takes a year and a half, and it takes let's say, because let's backtrack, right? I'm a spiritual Schrodinger's cat. Um, mind is camera and puppet master in part, but not, but no individual is the master controller of anything, but the collective, right? The collective insert the, the beaver dam. How do they know innovation, uh, speech here? If you never heard that, I'm fairly certain I've already rambled about it in some episode, but I don't know where, but you can also, I think Google that, but I'm not sure. I think I turned my computer. No, there it is. Um, and if, if certain things are true and the, the illusion, don't get caught up on it being not an illusion. It is. Don't get caught up on it being an illusion. It is. It is perniciously, morbidly, undeniably, and unavoidably persistent and real. And you will live and die here in a meat grinder of life and death until you learn certain lessons and you invoke certain cumulative common good for everyone sort of life-changing habit uh evolutionary uh you know transformative steps that involve sort of literally and not because any one person has ever said it inventing for ourselves because that you know innovation is here for a reason as a thing that humans do and it isn't building taller buildings so we can destroy the earth more so we can build taller buildings about how much money we have that's not the cause. That's not the reason. That's not the purpose. And that will kill us. And Mother Nature will wipe life out to purge and heal the wounds. And anyway, in the, pro- in, the, in the long term, we can either continue surviving through time or we can collapse into some self-destructive death caused by our own stupidity and ignorance. Or most importantly, because I don't want to get into argument about who is stupid and ignorant. We all are. We all were. I still don't know everything. I don't claim to know shit. I just have peace. I, I've decided what I think is real, choosing all the explanations I've come across, and you know, and literally cherry picking. And I, don't give me shit for that. It's valid. If everybody's got it wrong except for a little bit, what the fuck else are you supposed to do? So um, I digress. Accepting reality and reality's terms, setting aside what can be discerned. Not judged and spat in the face of as, but discerned as somebody's attempt to manipulate us psychologically, emotionally, spiritually, energetically, or any of those as individual tactics or as combo tactics, then we need to really gently um, have a conversation without freaking out, without choosing violence, without choosing hate, without choosing to kill each other about what is real, not real, and manipulation, and what is the best way to move forward. And if, if, we've, if I've got a minute, and if I've got people from every camp's attention, reasonable risk reduction and, and, and you know infectious mitigation protocols for a limited period, yes, we should vote for that. Tyranny, no. Exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. Never allow that. Of course. There's no debate. Why are we spitting in each other's face about that when tyranny exists already in a bunch of countries in ways that we just tolerate because it's them over there instead of us over here? Whatever country you're in, where you're spewing and, you know, ignoring Myanmar or Yemen, etc., etc., etc. And that as a species, we have other concerns Right? I mean, and I don't mean to dismiss any individual concern. They all must be healed, is the point. Uh, And that that healing is not like, we'll heal this little tiny demographic, or we'll heal this little tiny problem in this city, or we'll heal only these people that look the most damaged. It's heal the whole species at once, because we can With a combination and the best thinking of the convergence of uncorrupt, unskewed, unbiased science. 
because technical measurement and observation and repetition and verification that this is the way it works in the model of the universe always is good unless you use it for bad. So we got to just hold each other accountable according to the rules of how this universe works and what, how many people understand and know them. Because the more people understand and know them, the easier is it is for us as a species to build consensus in how to manifest through all the talents and skills that we may or may not fully be using or accessing, including the mitigation and uh, you know the, the spiritual healing that creates toxic behavior. Right? There is spiritual healing that facilitates, and it's not the thing, it's not the words, it's not the... It's not the healer that does the healing. It's always the trauma itself. When you break your arm, it isn't the doctor that magically makes sure that it heals back together. It, the doctor, as I've always pointed out, fertilizes you know the, the field uh, as a farming analogy. It, the doctor, when they're doing the job and not being corrupt and not doing horrible things that are horrible, do which they swear an oath for, right? In theory. And mind you, I'm not being ignorant. Human endeavors, I've already explained. I don't believe in absolutes of, of either good or bad. There's terrible people out there doing terrible things in every facet of everything that humans are doing, period. Um, and we need to heal the species about it, not piss in each other's face about it, is my point. And I think that we can, right? Because now, when the doctor sets the bone and creates the best possible conditions... There's some assumptions there, like good nutrition will uh, will boost all of the functioning of your organic mechanism. So whether they if they fail to remind you in that moment when you're having a routine like check on your cast or you're actually just that day you broke it, they just reset it and cast you or whatever the fuck, that's fail on them and whatever. But let's not argue about that. Let's remember that we all got to step forward to do that and like 12 other things that there's also equivalent to a healthy diet um, and, uh, et cetera, et cetera. There's, there's literally the curating and improving of and healing of the mind and the mind body and the network between us all that is a place where we share wisdom, which is not common sense. It's not being smart. It's not, it's a different order of operation that we've, just been conditioned to sort of neglect. And that's why she's personified as a god, right? Like in every culture. But we were, we forget because, oh, maybe we did or did not ever read the Bible. Maybe we did or did not ever review history and its art and, and its mythologies. Maybe you're, we did, but as a society, we fail at keeping the comprehension alive. Oh. And there's a pattern. And if you look at that big pattern, there's an argument that that's what the, all the psyops are about. And right now, they're pushing us off a ledge with a real disease. Did the Chinese invent it and in a lab with nanotechnology and 5G? Severely unlikely. It's not behaving like anyone's pushing buttons and it's got anything to do with 5G. Look and measure and you know track the data about how the the patterns of behavior of the transmission and of the thing we call COVID-19. Whatever, um, you know, if we can science and measure, and people are science deniers, <clears throat> pardon me, science deniers of all ilk are tragically also going to have to like, I love you and I forgive you, and you're going to have to suck it intellectually because you're going to, that, that cognitive dissonance is going to have to snap. Because real science can measure things. And if science was all fake, I couldn't do what, what I'm doing right now. Because the universe, while a dream within a dream of a butterfly dreaming that it's the god of the world, and da -da -da -da, it's also the womb that gives life to us, and it has some rules. And it looks and acts like this. The world we've all been born into. And we've done some things. Right? And we've done them, and we carry the the not only do we carry the results of them pragmatically and inherit them and um, stand on different, you know, pedestals, start from different starting points for all these myriad of reasons, 
but we ignore the central avenue and mechanisms of this complex living holographic reality womb being that we live inside of so that we don't address the problems of our collective in a collective way using the tools available to us as a healed species. And who can argue that like a person who is not fully healed cannot function well, right? In society, a person who's been damaged by whatever you do accept is real, getting shot and then recovering, you know, getting shot with bullets in the body and then recovering is a legitimate damage to the body incarnate, right? If that individual and, and get, getting in being amputee, uh, the sufferer or victim or the, you know, whatever the disfiguration caused by another person, by, uh, you know, an act of God, quote unquote, by a virulent disease, by getting hit, a, run over by a car, by whatever, that, that avoids death. Because let's not even talk about that yet. Everyone's too, you know, too wound up to deal with death. Which we cannot escape no matter what else is going on, right? It stands resolute. If there's one resolute, consistent, universal thing that must be accepted as absolute in its measurement, at least, is that the body dies. But... in terms of other things that can be observed about the process, we're conditioned to sort of just fear that and shut it down. So, put a pin in it on the things we have to have a public discourse about. A healing cycle of open, honest, real discourse about. And there's a million things. And can we do that if we're constantly bickering and or shooting at each other and or, you know, willfully choosing hate and or... Not expressing it, but thinking horrible thoughts or feeling horrible energies um, and projecting horrible, you know, as opposed to healing, healing, healing. And as crazy and cookies as it sounds, there's reason why that might work in a meaningful way. And obviously not about things that you cannot fix, right? No matter how much I try to project into the hologram, a million dollars will not magically appear on my desk. It might be because I keep saying that sentence over and over again. But it might not, it, and maybe if I stop saying that sentence and start saying that there is a way for me to cause for myself a million dollars to be on my desk at some point in my future, I could do it through effort and work and a little bit of magic. But it's not going to happen right here before the end of this podcast, right? Rules of the universe as they actually exist, not as some dictation or dictatorship or tyrant or ideological um, construct or culture or blah, blah, insist, but something that we can measure and verify. And whether we do or do not have a full, complete science of this is debatable in 2020, but we certainly have some interesting sciences that are really narrowly focused, but that are interconnected, and that there is a group of people or a collection of people, uh, individuals that are out there that can see because we are, a, you know, individuals that are creating the collective that it if you just look at it we can you know it is possible to see for everyone to see that a reasonable real clean legitimate science that converges with a spiritual understanding of the universe that includes you know a sort of mystical magic mysticism um can probably be a brilliant weapon which is a terrible analogy please forgive me uh, a brilliant tool to have in coping with our survival. And that that includes all legitimate, pragmatic, reasonable precautions of precautionary measures. And in our current condition, our current situation, with this looming headlines, which I've not had the mo I just saw this today. I woke up, by the way, I will publicly say, as I had to cancel some socially distanced public plans with some uh, you know a potential collaborator and a person of, of deep interest which shall remain anonymous because I don't know you know ugh, I don't know the impact and uh, you know there's a point I'm trying to get at I don't want to get sidetracked um, I had to make choices this morning like instantly from returning from dreamland whatever I was dreaming about I, I knew and the funny thing is between 
between the moment of going, ah, I've got to open my eyes soon, which is sort of the activation of my consciousness in my body that we call waking up, that we all share in common. Everybody wakes up in the morning, unless they haven't slept. But everyone wakes up from the last time they fell asleep or lost consciousness, right? Or they don't because of intervening things that lead to death. Well, that's actually happening. That cannot be denied. And the dismissals are a form of conditioning, just like the fear-mongering is a form of conditioning. If you are clearly observing the pattern of behavior and the pattern of what's being peddled as content and as opinion in, in a sort of large, big picture, thinking of the, the, the collective of all of our cultural tribalism as an ex, a self-expression uh, mosaic, of word salad, of people speaking their minds out there on the internet, on the news, but whichever way that you can receive people's opinions and anal analyzing them all in a very kind of, you know, big picture kind of way without diving into attachment and belief, but, but speculating for that which is least likely to be possible and trying to find a medium that would appease, not appease everyone, but unite everyone, appease everyone's concerns and fears in the healthy way that you can say that sentence. You can put it that way, because appease can be a loaded word. Appease the masses, appease the victims, appease this, this target community, appease that target community, right? And it's everywhere, right? It is not just with the anti-masker masker movement. But there's literally now, and to a certain degree, I feel somewhat responsible because I certainly feel like I use the label, both labels, pro-masker, anti-masker, anti-masker versus pro-masker labels, I was an early adopter. It came to me and I had never seen or heard anyone say that before and I wrote it. And now it's everywhere. I, I, I Was I the first person to coin it? I highly doubt it. I highly, Plenty of people thought of it and used it because there's so many of us here <laughs> and we really are here and this place really is a living fractal. And we really are and should be humbled by the constant contemplation of being a function of the total being, but not the singular most important being in it and never have been. We are like probiotic bacteria living in someone's appendix that might very well likely have appendicitis and have their appendix removed. Right? What, what does that mean to the probiotic bacteria that live inside that appendix as a collaborative cohabitating creature independent and separate from that which you call yourself in your body, right? What does that mean for them if you, they're dead. They will die the moment that appendix is starting to like fester and it'll all go chaotic and weird. And the, the events within the appendix, which we can measure and observe because plenty of people have gotten appendicitis, people used to die from that a lot. Until what? Until we kept an eye of a reasonable recollection and understanding of it, what it was and how it works, and monitored kids for it, and people in general, and, you know, uh, encouraged doctors to be able to recognize it for what it is, and there's the most effective treatment, whatever arguments you may have pro or, or for or against it, is when it crops up, and especially if it is acute, the removal of the appendix. It's tragedy. It's sad. Um, it's happened to millions of us. Is there a conspiracy theory about it? There probably is. There's probably several, and I, I haven't directly encountered them yet. right? But I don't want to give them my focus or attention. Because the more focus or attention we collectively give to any conspiracy theory, any conspiracy theory, any ideolog ideological construct, whether political or social or economic, or religious, or spiritual, or whatever. And we give it more power than our direct experiencing of our lives within the fishbowl of our lives um, as, a, as a balanced participant of a collective and an individuation, then the more problems we'll create and encounter and manifest uh, as individuals and as collectives. Uh, and... Whether that sounds crazy or not to you, my dear friend, 
it sounds like something we should investigate if it's real. And I see a lot of reason to be concerned about being, being real, as real as COVID-19 is. And Mother Nature, and I forgive me for daring to speak to her, but I call myself, if P oh, it's almost 420. Boom. Uh, I, I self-identify for reals because I really am not pretending this part. I self-identify as a devotee of, of the mother, of the womb, of the part of cosmos, which is mother and father, um, a yin-yang entity that creates the sun, the stars, the skies above us, the earth beneath us, the mountains, the air, the food we eat, the body we inhabit, and all of the invisible internal macrocosmic processes that we've blinded ourselves to that must be viable and real if they re if they render results when attempted to uh, engage with as we are encouraged to do right things like spirit and you know etc uh, etc cetera, et cetera. the fractal unfolds in a very mysterious and multifaceted way for the statement that the universe itself is the mind which you call you but many have said it. Carl Sagan said some version of that. This other guy who's more, whose name totally just escapes me right now said a more literal version of that, closer to what I just said. And others will say it too, because the mind is the collective of all the fractals of folding, having their individuated experience at all, eventually. And deep down, the individuation has got a lot of constructs. Many of them are worthy keeping. But it's got a lot of problems that those constructs have created, like the neglect required for this new disease that should have, could have, would have literally been starved of food. Here we get to the question, full circle, sorry for rambling for 52 minutes and 15 seconds, but here we come full circle. If we honor this thing that we call the virus, knowing that Mother Nature is fully capable of and has created by observational measurement, people deny it, suck it. It's there, we can measure it, we can verify it, we can experience it. When I walk in, when when I do theater and a lot of, and there have been nights where you can tell, not by judging, not by measuring, not by, but because I've worked theater, right? Where I'm in a position to uh, manage instruments that are safely secured directly above the audience's head. And I, you know, this happens in theaters around the world. Um, and uh, when you are up there or when you're on stage or backstage and then there's quiet in the, in the production of a particular theater and you listen to an audience full of 3,000 people, 500 people, 10,000 people, whatever. When you're in a stadium, well, the st once, you, once you reach a sort of uh, quantum mass of people, this gets harder to, to hear. But when you're in a, a reasonably large but limited group and there's a and there's a high statistical population, take the word statistics, statistics out, there's a high literal population of individuals that for all the complex reasons of coincidence in life and blah, you know, and uh, the thing we call behavior are here on a given night more more concentrated than usual and they're sick and they're coughing but they came against better judgment because they couldn't fucking give up their seats and bless you I've tragically done that with the thing we call the common cold before in the past um, we are you know literally spewing that which is the contagion whatever it is a little tiny person with a job to do because it is life one way or the other. And there's the denier statement that it is not alive because blah, 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 and it's impossible, right? Well, definition of life needs to be upgraded because we are literally little tiny germs like probiotic bacteria in, in the colon or the appendix of someone else. And from our perspective, we're busy arguing about the, the purpose and form and function of the entire digestive tract which opens, begins at the mouth and ends at the anus of, uh, and ignoring the rest of the, fu you know, functioning features of, uh, of the being within which we're colonized and having our experience of living our lives and doing our jobs and, and running around and doing all the things required for us to propagate our, our, progeny and and continue to breathe the air and drink the water and eat the food and poop because for whatever reason mother nature thinks that's important 
And there might be other things that we just aren't thinking of or even looking at that might also be important for the procedures and processes and needs and wants of the divine being, which is the metastructural creature that is that analogy. Um, and quite frankly, this all hinges on this, folks, and this is the mind blower. As observed, literally, without bias, without political and ideological bullshit getting in the way, Mother Nature renders life forms that must eat to survive, period. And that that is, there's very few creatures that don't eat to survive, so they must eat something. Is there a state of existence that escapes that? Arguable, debatable, but it's a question of philosophy. In terms of measurement, we'll know if we ever achieve it, because then we'll be able to measure it. Um, have people ever exemplified that? Debatable, but there's a, there, but there are claims. Let's put a pin in that. But in terms of what coming back, staying in the pocket of how we perceive the womb and how the you know every living thing in the womb operates for reals. Here's a hard pill to swallow. Life consumes life. Big life consumes little life, but it is not a top-down hierarchy, and we are not the apex, and we are not the masters of all the other slaves we keep so that we can poop and continue breathing the air and drinking the water and breaking progeny another day traveling through time. And we used to live, we evolved from having originated in the, la the lavish, endless, timeless web and multiple, like, Schrodinger's cats alternatives of all the infinite variations thereof because a finite fractal bound within its confines, which is the meta, meta, meta womb, the egg, the yin-yang egg. Within it, it unfolds infinitely with, you know, inwards in all directions. That's what a fractal does. And if the living fractal that gives birth to us is doing that, and we are just in the appendix, but not the appendix, the womb, and we're destroying that womb successfully, we are the disease. Until we transform our toxic behavior and no longer do that. And there has always been disease. There's no, there's no need to deny that. There's no, that's a hoax that we're pulling on ourselves. That's the hoax. Was, is this disease... Happy 420, everybody. Is this disease uh, an artifice, uh, a creation, a, a code of programming in the video game? Is this disease? I don't know, but it's killing people. And it's behaving, from my perspective and ability to reflect on prior records of disease, like a really nuanced motherfucker. And I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm irritated because, the, you know, there's the meme going around that, that criticizes or calls germ theory a conspiracy theory. But I live in a universe where I know that the coffee that I drink is a vessel form of consciousness. And that although that conscious, that coffee can't speak, won't ever speak, at least not until it somehow is transformed into having the ability to speak and us having the receptivity of, of accepting it, it, it may never happen. There's no need for it to happen. The cartoon of that happening would be curious and interesting to watch, but... The rules of the universe are so that it still is and requires consciousness to take that form, to be it, no matter how you slice it, no matter what you deny as this form over here. Uh, and within that multiplex of existence, there are an endless array of events and phenomena that can kill us. And we're doing a lousy job of managing that because we're playing PSYOP games on ourselves about it and participating willingly, semi-willingly, unwillingly, unwittingly, semi-wittingly, um, and sometimes unconsciously. We all are the sheeple. And some of us are the, the within the sheeple are sheeple that underneath the sheep are parrot people that are here just to repeat whatever the fuck sounds cool to repeat. Instead of processing and relinquishing things that, okay, that doesn't make sense. That's what we have to have. And returning to a place of connecting to the inner realm of phenomena that we've been conditioned to ignore, which includes a really littered, toxically kind of 
corrupt a little bit uh, in a sort of it can get worse and we really shouldn't let it mental energy wordless intraweb network of consciousness that is explicitly designed for the distribution of things like wisdom things like spontaneous inspiration things like um, the conveying of words that come from not the body vessel but other corners of the internal multiplex of processes that is the mind of all the minds right because if every if every option you ever made creates an, a multiverse where you did something that you didn't do here that needs a mind where is that mind where is it experiencing itself how is it as carl sagan puts it a little bit of the universe looking up to perceive itself as a member participant function of the universe itself. Where is that mind inside of us all? Of course it is because your mind's inside of you or so at first it appears, right? Until you figure out how to meditate hard enough to go deep inside of that. What does that have to do with COVID-19? It means we've got to approach it with the multiplex of tools, the big pharma tools, but without the corruption. The medical uh, system uh, tools of the physical treatments and, um, you know, all the things that we're doing in the buildings we call hospitals without the corruption and without the noise of fucking deniership, cancel culture, like it doesn't work. It's not real. Um, all the things that we normally would do plus, you know, groundbreaking science, because this won't be the last disease in nature. Disease exists. And often it is caused by little tiny things doing what they're doing to live and breed and perpetuate their progeny, which is what we're doing, no matter how you slice it. And the thing that is the mind-blowing pill, life consumes life and perpetuates the act of preparing the meat to be consumed by others. It always does that. When you die, your meat, unless burnt by other people, normally would, should, could have, would have been consumed by other living things that are gross and disgusting and we kind of want to eradicate and we're waging genocide on because any, and I'm guilty of this. But if we all transcend, maybe that, that need for the flesh, that's a whole nother thing, right? But we used to be food is the realization. And this model of trying to pretend and acting as if we weren't and we shouldn't be is toxic. And well, it causes, since there's no more big giant things trying to eat us, there will be ever increasingly more little things trying to destroy us so we fall over dead and other little things can eat us. Because there are little things that eat us. Little things all the way down to the microscopic level that cannot conceivably comprehend, we would judge, to know what they're doing, but there they are, consuming and pooping and transforming that which they consume into something else which is apparently necessary and necessitated, just like death itself is as a prerequisite for the life you are enjoying. Without it, it wouldn't exist. Despite the fact this is all a dream. Blah! Mind-blowing, right? I'll stop right here because I've been rambling for a bit, but let's take reasonable precautionary measures to not spread disease because it has mutated. And... Let's make art about learning that lesson so that more people can learn that lesson. Don't steal my shit because that's what I'm doing. Thanks for listening. Here's a bit of music to ease your mind. Remember the bullet points. Tyranny, no. Of course, no. 
precautionary measures for temporary limits until we can strangle this bug and squash it, of course, if it's real and it's killing people. There's bigger fish to fry. But we shouldn't let people die. We are all being targeted as sheeple, whether you think of yourself as not a sheeple or a sheeple or whatever the fuck your opinion is, we've all been targeted. Instead of dreading in fear that this is happening, we must acknowledge it and purge our minds. Heal our minds. Heal our minds. Heal our minds. The you within you is the metaconsciousness of everyone, no matter what lived experience you've had. In order to transcend your lived experience, you must forgive yourself and all others unconditionally, not because they've earned it, not because they deserve it, not because you're willing or unwilling to do it, because it collectively heals all. The conditioning is what's telling you to doubt that. And we can test the theory and find out. Why would we vote no for that? Your mind is a Schrodinger's voting box of manifestation. Break you. Break you.